As you may have known, I've been making my way through the Mass Effect series. The original, while perhaps iconic, was boring. If it wasn't for a strong cast of characters, I'd probably have dropped it again. Mass Effect 2, on the other hand, is now up there with some of my favourites. It had some shortcomings with world design, it had some issues with PC controls, but had an ultimately very strong story and just as good a cast of characters. Then, I got the Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 3 puts you back into the combat boots of Commander Shepard, who, after three years of strict monitoring because of his ties to Cerberus, is needed once again to save the world, this time from the Reaper invasion. And right off the bat, Mass Effect 3 pretty much solves my big issue with the beginning of the previous game. Mass Effect 2 began by killing off Shepard, something I felt was particularly weak from a story point of view, as it ultimately didn't affect the story that much, if at all, only really being used to force Shepard to work with Cerberus and to poorly introduce the Collectors. Mass Effect 3's Reaper invasion, on the other hand, is highly effective. Not only is there actual stakes, as people are shown to be dying and staying dead, but this also inherently gives the game its entire plot to figure out a way to stop the Reapers. Your squad in Mass Effect 3 is unfortunately reduced versus the previous game. Depending on the events of previous games and if you have the DLC, you can have anywhere from 3 to 7 members. Most of your team has returned from Mass Effect 1, either Kaiden or Ashley depending on the events of the first game, Liara who's now the Shadow Broker following the events of one of Mass Effect 2's DLC, Tali is back your Quarian tech expert who's now working with the Quarian Admirals to help them deal with the Reaper invasion, and Garrus the ex-cop who's now working back on the Turian homeworld to try and help his people. New are Edi, the previous game's Normandy VI, who ended up getting a body because of reasons. She can also end up dating Joker, like a low budget recreation of Spike Jones as her, but not as good. Also new is James Vega, who I initially thought was just going to be a muscle bound comic relief, adding Lil Morton and Jacob, but actually he ended up having a fairly compelling backstory relating to him feeling guilty about the loss of his team during the mission. There's also naturally some supporting crew in Normandy as well, including Joker, who is his usual cocky self, Dr. Chokwas or Dr. Michael, who really feel like an afterthought, not even commenting on the events you just witnessed, Com specialist Samantha Trainer, who's a slightly more interesting version of the person who tells Shep to have an email, and is also a lesbian, as the game so subtly hints at. And I apologise for all those times I talked about how um, attractive your voice was. Diana Allers, an optional member of the Normandy, a journalist who honestly has some really mediocre voice acting. It's like they didn't even hire a voice actor as a player. Oh. And Steve Cortez, your shuttle pilot who's actually got a sort of interesting plot around the loss of his partner. Now, the astute among you may have noticed I said partner instead of wife when talking about Steve. That's because Steve is gay. And some of the eye candy in the crowd isn't too shabby either. A first for the series. And naturally, this feeds into the game's romance mechanic as well. While both previous games allowed Femship to romance both men and women, Mass Effect 3 is the first to allow a same sex relationship for Mship, with either Steve or Caden, who's apparently bi now. As interesting, seem to have all the finesse of driving a shuttle into another shuttle. As I sort of alluded to in my Mass Effect video, I ended up going with Caden in my playthrough. His relationship is introduced awkwardly. It feels initially less like love and more of an awkward, we could die at some point, so wanna get with me so we don't have to be lonely at the end of the world? The game even gets you to confirm it, like you're quitting an unsaved text document. But perhaps the most awkward part is that at no point does the concept of romance or being partners come up, despite the fact it's clearly intended that Shep and Caden are a date because of the whole dinner overlooking a romantic view and the romance view in the background. It also doesn't really affect things outside the romance cutscenes. Characters don't flirt with you or really say anything different because you're in a relationship. It's weird, as some dialogue would change when you became romantically involved with characters in Dragon Age. But at the very least, you get the awkward sex scene to end all awkward sex scenes. Outside of romance, I do like that the game has more downtime. I like just getting to hang out with my squad members and run errands in the Citadel. Sure, it may just be filling in time, but it's largely optional, and it's a nice bit of quiet downtime. You also get to hear people having conversations in the world, and then interrupt them to solve their moral quandaries. While the latter is a bit contrived, I do like how alive the world feels. For instance, people move around Normandy. While in Mass Effect 2, Garrus was always found making calibrations to the gun, he'll now show up in different places talking with people. I like it, it helps make the world feel more alive. I also like the third game's Normandy. It seems like a combination of the previous two games' Normandies, with a few extras tacked on for good measure. Also, Shepard's room is used for more now, which is a nice touch. 
It always felt like this place where all you could do was presumably change Shep's outfit, read your emails, and romance characters. Now it's a room where you can change Shep's outfit, read your emails, romance characters, but also hang out with your squad members in a more intimate setting. The Citadel is also pretty good. It's not as big nor as open as the original, but it's also bigger and easier to navigate than the second games. I was, however, disappointed by the lack of character side missions. Both previous games would have missions more personal to characters, helping fill out their backstories, but outside the Palavin, Rannoch and Fezia missions. Character development is relegated to small cutscenes on the Normandy or short scenes on the Citadel. It's a shame, since especially with James, the characters are set up to explore a lot of backstory. Side missions in Mass Effect 3 are generally pretty bad, however, so I'm not sure how disappointed I really am. They range from average, where you might need to fight some waves of enemies, to downright uninspired, where you have to collect things on a planet, and if you miss it, you can more often than not just buy it. Gameplay is largely the same in Mass Effect 3. Guns now have more adding some depth to your loadouts. Armor has more of an importance. Those who like to pick armor for practicality will be happy that you can get away with just picking the coolest looking gumbo as I did. The gameplay is occasionally shaken up with scenes where you need to protect an objective, scenes where you're down a squad member, and everyone's favorite, turret sections. They're a decent distraction, and I won't say no to some different gameplay once in a while, but they also didn't really add much to the game itself. That said though, I did enjoy the section where we entered the Geth server. That was pretty great. Unfortunately, Mass Effect 3 hasn't improved upon its control issues of the previous game. Interactions are still spacebar heavy, with little improvements. That said, double tap spacebar to climb is a huge quality of life thing versus the previous game. I also found Mass Effect 3 to be the least stable of the trilogy, it wasn't anything too major, a few crashes to desktop here or there, and saved often enough to be a mostly non-issue, but I do still wish it was more stable. There was also a good few glitches, most of them involving Dr. Chuck was for some reason. Crew health issues to- No, 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 no. Graphically, Mass Effect 3 is a good leap over its predecessor, with significantly higher res textures, especially in some of the outfits, and some really good looking cutscenes at times. They aren't the most amazingly stunning looking cutscenes in all of gaming, nor will they be competing with TV or film anytime soon, but they are solid looking. Some strong technical details like Mobe cuts, and some occasionally interesting framing, as well as some often gorgeous looking scenery, especially when landing on a planet. In the main missions at least. Side missions are naturally less well crafted, but what do you really expect? There was also at least one place where I thought maybe there should be a cutscene. The UI is largely the same as the previous game, with a few small changes, like Shep's shield and health being separated, but still doesn't show as much info about your squad members as the first game did. Audio is also fantastic, sound effects are still as good as the previous game. You heard it. But the music is vastly improved. I didn't think Mass Effect 2's music was bad, but I didn't find it particularly iconic or memorable. It probably does help that I listen to and particularly enjoy a lot of electronic, industrial, and synthy music, but for me, Mass Effect 3's music is honestly the best in the series. Sure, some iconic pieces like the elusive man's theme are reprised here, but the game also does have some very solid new stuff, like the Mars theme. A future for the Krogan. And of course, the iconic Leaving Earth and an end once and for all. Mass Effect 3 has also added a multiplayer mode. I have nothing against adding other modes to games, like multiplayer or puzzle modes, but I do start to have a problem when the game needs me to play it to get the full experience. And that's the case here. How well the end game goes is, or was, heavily affected by the multiplayer mode. Meaning that if you, like me, get your internet through decades old copper and avoid multiplayer like the plague, you're not going to have a good time. That said, multiplayer from the one match I played was solid. Not my cup of tea, but simply a port of the game's mechanic to a wave-based arena shooter. There was little noticeable lag, and impressively, I found the match in seconds in 2018. And with that, I have to get to the elephant in the room. The ending. Mass Effect 3 is notorious for having a terrible ending, and as such, I feel I should touch on it here. And with that, spoiler warning. There will be spoilers here, and you can skip to this time code to see the conclusion of the video. 
So initially, I didn't find the beginning of the endgame to be that bad. Accessing the elusive man's base, discovering some details about the Lazarus project in Edie, and defeating Kai Leng were really satisfying. Like, really satisfying. That was for Thane and Miranda, you son of a bitch. And you're in my chair. It's probably one of the game's best lines. Second only to This is just a fling, Bakarian. I'm using you for your body. Even the stuff on Earth started out pretty well. That was up until the point where people started dying. As it turns out, I stupidly interpreted my effective military strength of 2,358, significantly higher than the apparent minimum, as good. No, I needed 3,100 at a minimum. So your effective military strength is affected by two things. Your military strength, a raw number of the members of your military, and your readiness rating. The readiness rating can head up to a maximum of 50% in the base game. The only way to increase that percentage is by playing the multiplayer, using Mass Effect Infiltrator, Mass Effect 3 Database, or N7HQ. But since I'm a bad person for waiting too long, Infiltrator and Datapad aren't available anymore, since they're both gone from the App Store and Google Play. So really, I get N7HQ, which doesn't merely have a lot of stuff from Datapad built into it now. The problem here is they're both time sinks. According to some quick math, at best you need to play two and a half hours of multiplayer, or almost 18 hours with N7. But I digress because the end game is bad regardless. So the TLDR is Shep's almost killed manages to make their way up to the Citadel, which turns out to be the catalyst you've been looking for this entire time. You go to activate the catalyst, the elusive man steps in, being controlled by the Reapers to try and stop you by threatening to kill Anderson. Now if the writers were smart, what should have happened was you kill the elusive man, you activate the catalyst, leaving Shep and Admiral Anderson with their fate unknown. Run some epilogue or the credits and you're better than what happened at least. But that didn't happen. Instead, as it turns out, the kid that's been haunting Shep's dream is actually the catalyst, but not really, and that the Reaper invasion was meant to happen to help humanity, but apparently Shep is able to safely stop it because of reasons. So in my playthrough, I agonizingly slowly aimed my way over to my ending of choice and sat through the most cliched cutscene of Shep's fallen comrades and lover, a slideshow explaining how the war was over, and the most confusing scene where the Normandy has landed on some random planet. I mean, it's not 100% horrible. I enjoyed the moments where you were saying goodbye to your squad members, and while it was cheesy, I didn't mind the scene where Shep's lover put their name up on the Normandy's list of casualties. Also, when I started Mass Effect 3, I was hoping that the complaints about the game's ending would just be people overhyping how bad it was. But honestly, I get it now. I'd be annoyed if I spent over a day of my life watching the death of a good number of beloved characters just to find out all of this in the end meant nothing. Mass Effect 3 is a funny game to conclude a review for. On one hand, if you're a sort of person who thinks the ending is paramount, then you're really going to be disappointed by this. As I discuss, it really is as bad as people say. On the other hand, if you care more about the journey and the story before you get to the end, Mass Effect 3 is pretty good, if you can get past some occasional technical issues and of course the last two or so hours of the game. But I also have to give credit where it's due. I'm seriously impressed by the trilogy as a whole. I honestly can't think of another game that's managed to make the 180 from feeling boring, uninspired and overhyped to being among my favourites of all time, quite as well as the Mass Effect series has. Sure, the first game is boring, the second has control issues, and the third has one of the worst endings to a video game of all time. But Honestly, they have character and a compelling story, which has really cemented them up there with greats like Deus Ex and The Witcher. And with that, I can't wait to see how Andromeda lives up to them soon.